I've never done a chopping block before, but I love watching them. I think they're so beneficial. And I will have some creators who have chopping block videos or playlists. I'll leave them in the description box. They're just such a great way to look at if something is worth keeping for someone. And usually they go into depth about the different ways they tried them and are really trying to make them work to make them worth keeping. I have quite a few products like that in my collection where I'm not ready to declutter them. I want to give them another chance, but I just don't really know how I feel about them right now. I will start with some cheek products that I got in PR recently. I have two of the cream blushes from Lawless and then two of these cream products from Bare Minerals. I've swatched these, but that's really the extent of how much I've tried. I have some very preliminary first impressions of them, but I don't know what they look like on my face. I don't know how long they last, how they perform with other products and stuff like that. So that's what I'm gonna try to focus on over the next month. The two shades from the Lawless Cream Blushes that I have are Starburst and Angel. Angel looks like a very me shade. I think this is gonna be a beautiful everyday color. And then Starburst is a little more unique for me. I don't really own a lot of orangey blushes like this, but I think that depth is gonna help make it a little more wearable for me. And even though it does have some orange to it, it it's not a fully orange blush, not to me at least. I like that these feel kind of balmy. And as you blend them in, they feel more velvety. I think that's gonna help them blend really nicely and they don't feel very slippery and sticky. They might not completely dry down, I'm not sure yet, but they're definitely not going to feel sticky and heavy on my skin. Yeah, I think I'm gonna get along really well with this sort of formula because I don't like heavy cream blushes. I like ones that are a bit softer, more balmy, velvety. They don't have any glitter in them. They don't look very shiny, so I imagine I'll like the finish of these on my cheeks, but I won't know until until I actually test them out. And the other two from Bare Minerals, one of them is a bronzer and the other one is a highlighting blush. The bronzer is in the shade Kiss of Pink, which I do have the powder version of it. And I think it'll be interesting to see how similar they are, if they are just the exact same shade, but in different formulas. And then the highlighting blush is much lighter and I imagine it'll be more glow with, with just a hint of pink. And that's in the shade Rose Glow. I think it's gonna be a little bit more cool toned than Kiss of Pink. I've only swatched these on the back of my hand and the only thing that concerns me is that they do feel very moisturizing and almost a little sticky. So yeah, I don't know how I'm gonna like that on my face. I, I feel like I have very specific preferences when it comes to cream cheek products, but I still wanna give them a shot. I don't wanna just write them off without actually trying them. Maybe it'll be better to wear kind of like underneath powder, like put this on top of my foundation set my face with powder and then put a powder blush on top, using it to layer instead of just using it on its own on top of all of my makeup. Maybe it doesn't feel as sticky when I use a wet sponge to apply it versus a brush or my fingers. I'm not sure, I'm gonna play around with those two shades and I will compare that Kiss of Pink shade from the two formulas to see how similar they are. The next two are foundations and I think the reason I don't reach for them that much right now is because the shades are just slightly off this one from Smashbox, the Always On Skin Balancing Foundation. It's in the shade F10O. You might be able to see here, that's a very yellow foundation. And with it being more full coverage, it's kind of hard to get away with that. But if you've watched any of my other videos or tutorials or anything, you know I'm typically mixing my foundation with like two or three other things in order to get the color and the finish and the level of coverage that I want. And so I'm no stranger to mixing my foundation with other things to make them work better for me, which is what I'm gonna try to do with both of these foundations. So the Smashbox one, the color's a little bit off. I wanna see if I can still make it work because I'm almost finished with one of my other really full coverage foundations and I am going to be needing to reach for others like it once that one is gone. And then this one from Fenty Beauty is also a little bit of an odd shade match. It's the Eavesdrop Blurring Skin Tint in the shade six. I can't remember exactly why I went for this shade in particular. I wonder if it's because it has an olive undertone. Okay, the, the Sephora website says that this is a light medium with cool neutral undertones. I don't know why I purchased it then. I'm pretty sure I bought this last summer when I had a tan already and I was looking for foundations to mix to make them match me better. And Ulta was having a 10 times the points on like Fenty Beauty foundations. So I bought this and the powder foundation as well. With this having that cool neutral undertone, I do think it is cooler than I typically go for for foundations. And I don't really know if you can tell 
on camera right now, but I do have a little bit of a tan, a little more tan than normal. So this seems to match me a little better now. It doesn't look that stark on the back of my hand. I still think it would be too dark to put on my face, especially if it oxidizes at all, but um, it is a more low coverage foundation. It's a skin tint. And so I'm hoping that I can mix it with something else to help neutralize that color and maybe lighten it up a little bit. So yeah, I'll play around with both of these, see if I can find a combination that I really like for each and hopefully I can make it work. Hopefully I can make all of these work. Next up is an eyeliner from About Face. It's the Line Artist Longwear Gel Eyeliner in the shade Devil's Diary, which is a plum purple shade. I've only worn this once, and I don't remember being that impressed with the pigmentation and the lasting power. I tend to prefer eyeliners that don't transfer that easily because I typically put them on the inner upper lash line of my eyes and then maybe a little bit on the outer corner. I don't recall this being that impressive but I haven't used it enough to really know for sure so I'm going to try it out and wear it more often to see if it is worth keeping if I can find a way that I like it. Half of my products on my chopping block right now are lip products. The first one is this duo. This is a very clear glossy lip treatment and then this is from Shop Miss A and it's the Artista Lip Liner Pen. It's so unique because it's actually a liquid liner pen, but it's in a pink color and it's supposed to be used on your lips. And one thing I really like about it is I swatched on the back of my hand once to see what the color was like, and then I tried to get it off. I used a cleansing oil and everything, and I couldn't get it off. It stayed on my hand for like two or three days. However, I was reaching for both of these when I started getting um, a really weird reaction on my lips a few weeks ago. I talked about it in not my most recent empties, but the one before that. I took the stopper out of my Huda Beauty gloss balm and I was just finishing it, so I was wearing it more regularly to go through it. And I got a really bad reaction on my lips. They were like cracking and itchy and red and swollen and it took probably a week and a half for it to eventually go away. And a few weeks ago, I had a very small baby version of that reaction on my lips, and I was wearing both of these at the time when I started getting that reaction. I stopped using both of them, and my lips went back to normal pretty quickly, but it makes me feel like one of these is the culprit. One of these is what made my lips feel that way. And so I'm gonna test them out separately, see if I get a reaction from either of them. If I don't, then I can keep them, but if I do, then I'll know that I should probably not keep it. So these are on the chopping block because I wanna to try to figure out what was making my lips feel so dry and I can't exactly know for sure until I test them out. This one is on the chopping block because I got it at the beginning of the year and I haven't worn it more than once and I just wanna know if I like it, if it's worth keeping. And that's the Fenty Beauty Gloss Balm in Fenty Glow. It has a shimmer to it, which I'm not normally a big fan of, but I have worn shimmery lip glosses before and it really wasn't that big of a deal. So that's not enough of a reason for me to get rid of it. It smells incredibly sweet, which I'm not a big fan of typically. So again, I wanna try it out to see if it's worth that. And if I remember correctly, this did have a really tingly feeling on the lips. So there's just some aspects of this gloss that aren't ideal. And I wanna just make sure I reach for it a few times in a row really have a chance to focus on it to see if it's something I would enjoy enough to keep. This next product is very similar. It's the Makeup by Mario Moisture Glow in the shade Blush Glow. Normally, I love these clicky pen type of lip products where they're really nourishing, really thick. They have a little bit of a color to them. Normally, those are right up my alley, but this one is very plumping and has a very strong minty tingly feel on the lips. And the last time I wore it, it felt a bit overwhelming but sometimes when I don't wear minty lip products for a while and then I come back and I try them again, I feel overwhelmed the first time and then after I use them a couple more times, it's like not a big deal. So I'm gonna try that with this. I'm gonna wear it a few times and see if I can handle the burn. <laughs> and if I can, then I can just try to finish it and move on. But if it's that uncomfortable where I really dread wearing it, then I will likely declutter it. These next two are very similar. They have like a weird taste to them and I just wanna see if, if it's a big enough deal for me to not wanna keep them anymore. The first one is this Sigma Lip Mask. It's in the shade All Heart, or in the flavor All Heart, and I've worn a lot of this already. Like, there's a pretty big dip in there. This is a really, really good nourishing lip mask, especially for overnight. Something very unique about this is that it smells like 
shea butter or maybe even cocoa butter. Like it smells like body cream. Very interesting choice for a lip mask. And I was wearing a different lip mask. I came back to this one, tried it on, and I realized it tasted a little soapy. Not necessarily soapy, but just perfumey. It tasted like what I imagine a body cream would taste like, which is so odd. I'm hoping it's just one of those scenarios where once I wear it a few times, I get used to that and I don't notice it anymore and I can still continue enjoying this, but we'll have to see. It's not an old product. I got it last December. Next up is the Serum Balm from Make Beauty. This is in the shade Halo Moon. And this one doesn't really smell like anything, but it does have a really slight sweet taste to it. Really beautiful velvety balm. Doesn't really have a lot of color on the lips. And I would just like to, again, focus on this a little bit and see if that sweet taste is something that's gonna annoy me more and more over time, or if it's gonna be something that I get used to really quickly and don't notice after a while. And then the last one is this J-Cat Beauty Dew Glow Lip Hydrator. I have talked about almost all of these lip products in a litmus feature at some point or another. So if you wanna see swatches or more thorough reviews of these products, I will direct you to my litmus playlist and I have the title of all the products in the title of those videos, so they'll be really easy to find. And I did feature this one in a litmus feature. There's nothing wrong with this necessarily. I have a lot of creamy lipsticks, tinted lip balms, lip glosses, nourishing lip masks. I have a lot of really beautiful, comfortable lip products that I reach for all the time. And just because I have such a big lip collection, some do fall through the cracks on occasion, and this one is one of those products. I think the reason why I tend to prefer other formulas over this is this has a slightly stiffer formula. I wouldn't say it's waxy necessarily, but compared to the other stuff I have, it does feel a little bit like that. And I just want to give this a chance. I don't want to just get rid of it for no reason, but I have found myself not reaching for it and I want to give it a chance. I want to bring it back into my routine and um, remember why I liked it so much in the first place. So I have a lot to work through here and I would like to make sure I give myself enough time to really test them out and really find a way to make them work. And more often than not, I can make most makeup products work. Like I'm, I'm buying decent quality stuff and it's really hard to find like horrible makeup nowadays, at least for me. So I'm gonna give myself some time to really try and make all of these work. Hopefully I don't have to declutter any of them and I find something that I like about all of them. Yeah, I imagine my update for this video will likely be in a month. If I need a little bit more time, then I will take it. But that's everything I have for today. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.